In this edition of Aston1936.com, I'm going to show you how to do a pads only brake service. So we're just going to be replacing the brake pads because we've done our brake inspection and we found that our uh, rotors and our caliper and our brake lines and everything are in good shape. So all we need to do is change out our worn out pads. So before we get started, I just want to give you a reminder. These are your brakes. This is not an air cleaner in that if you don't get it done right, um, nothing, nobody gets hurt. If your brakes don't work right, somebody could get hurt or killed. So if you don't feel comfortable doing this, don't. But that said, I'm going to show you all the steps needed to do it. I think it's well within the scope of anybody with a modicum of mechanical know it, uh, you know, abilities. And I think you should be able to do a great job at doing this if you just follow along at home. Well, let's go ahead and see what uh, tools we'll need and what parts we're going to need. Before we get started, uh, changing the brake pads, I thought it'd be good to go over the parts and supplies and tools you'll need. Uh, first and foremost, of course, you need uh, brake pads. A set for the front, a set for the rear if you're doing them both. Um, see my other video on selecting brake pads, but of course, uh, here I'm using EBC Red Stuff pads, but you could be using Porterfield uh, R4S's or even Pageant Original uh, Aston Martin branded uh, pads. So the brand isn't all that particular. Um, I'd like to point out that the front pads are considerably larger than the rear. So uh, they're definitely a different part uh, depending on um, uh, whether you're doing the front or rear axles only. Uh, you'll notice that the front pads um, come with uh, anti-squeal shims. Uh, so basically these are, um, uh, EBC supplies those. Um, Porterfield does not. You have to reuse your old ones. Um, so basically these snap onto the back of the pad and go between the piston uh, and the back of the pad itself. Um, on the rear pads they actually have the shims already pre-bonded to the pad. So um, that's a little bit of something about those. Um, you need a bunch of supplies when you're working on brakes. Uh, so uh, one of the things you really need a fair, a good size full can of is brake clean because you'll be uh, cleaning up your calipers and the old pins and uh, spring clips. So make sure you have a good supply of brake clean. Uh, Aston Martin issued a service bulletin that you need to, uh, to apply um, disc brake quiet type of rubberizing material to the backs of the pads before fitting to try and minimize the squeal factor. Uh, they actually recommend using Tunap brand MP113. Well, I'm in the United States, um, so I went down to my uh, local auto parts store and picked up um, some Permatex Disc Brake Quiet. It comes in individual packs. There's two per container here. And because I'm going to do all four corners, I got uh, two boxes of it. So I have four little packets, but one packet per corner will be enough. And this is like a rubberizing uh, material we'll put on at the end. So I'll show you how to use that. Then I also picked up uh, some Permatex uh, Ultra Disc Brake Caliper Lube. Essentially this is high temperature grease. This is, not, this is not for necessarily stopping squeal, but it's for lubricating the pins and where the uh, brake pads slide in the calipers. So it's like really high temperature, doesn't wash out grease. So it's good to have that. Again, there's two packs per box and I bought two boxes because I'm doing all four corners. Uh, changing your brakes is a dirty business, so a lot of times I don't wear gloves, but this is definitely one of those occasions where it's going to be worthwhile to have some disposable gloves uh, to wear during the project. Uh, you're also going to need a healthy supply of uh, shop towels or rags, because um, as you're cleaning up parts, uh, you're going to definitely use a bunch of these. You're also going to need a few simple tools to um, uh, change your brake pads. Uh, one of the Handiest things is a small uh, inspection light uh, to see in those hard to see places. Um, you're going to need a small hammer of some sort because you're going to have to use a drift or some sort of pin punch to knock out the uh, caliper or the, the um, brake pad retaining pins. And this is a 332 diameter um, punch, but you could even use a, you know, a stout nail that's just been ground flat on the end. Uh, to do, get the job done. Doesn't have to, you're not really going to be pounding really hard, but you definitely need some sort of implement like this. Um, a small flat blade screwdriver is handy 
because if you're going planning on reusing your um, brake wear sensors that fit in this slot, you'll need to tease the old one out and you won't be able to pull it out with just with your fingers probably without breaking it. So just some small screwdriver to pry that up and out of there is handy. And then you need some sort of suction device. So freak your wife out and ask to borrow the turkey baster, but if you use it, you're never gonna be able to use it for food again because it's gonna get brake fluid in it. Um, so uh, some sort of suction device because you're gonna have to suck some extra brake fluid out of the um, uh, brake fluid reservoir and I'm not actually going to use my wife's turkey baster. I actually have um, uh, a Mighty Vac uh, uh, suction device for bleeding the brakes. I'm just going to use this to um, go in and uh, slurp out the excess brake uh, fluid that's going to materialize in the, uh, 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 the master cylinder. So, all right, with all my tools assembled, let's get on to the task of uh, pulling the old pads out. So let's get started. Um, First thing I want to point out is I took a big black pl heavy duty plastic garbage bag, I snipped it along the edges in the bottom and I spread it out. All this brake dust gets everywhere in the garage and stuff so I wanted to lay down a, um, a drop cloth essentially. So you can see that's in place. Um, when you're servicing the front brakes one of the things we can do to make our life easier is to turn the steering uh, to the opposite lock to bring the rotor out. Uh, the caliper out this way. So I'm going to go do that, but while we're on the way to do that, uh, we're going to do one other important thing. We need to loosen the cap on the brake fluid reservoir because as we compress the pistons back into the caliper, the brake fluid level is going to go up. And uh, we need to monitor this uh, as the process goes on to make sure we don't overflow it. You could absolutely overflow it. And it could splash up while it's going on. So basically I've taken the cap off and I'm just going to leave it covering but loose um, so it gets any sort of backsplash. Um. All right, so now I'm going to turn the steering all the way to the full lock. And I guess I should restate the obvious. Um, I put the car up on uh, all four stands. Um, you could do this with a single point jacking just by lifting one corner at a time and working there. I absolutely suggest just doing one corner at a time. Um, I've also removed my inner fender liner. I'm doing that mostly because I'm doing some other projects right now too. So you could leave your inner fender liner in if you needed to. Um, all right, so working with the brakes is super dirty. Um, and you don't normally see me glove up, but uh, working with the brakes is worth gloving up. So these are just some disposable Permatex um, nit nitrile gloves. So the first thing we're gonna do now is uh, we're gonna use our uh, pin punch. Um, we could do a nail with the top flatted off, but basically we have to drive back out the um, retaining pins for the uh, brake pads. So I'm just gonna use a hammer and I'm gonna drive this part way out just to release it from this side. Then once it's there, you should be able to do it by hand. This clip in the middle is spring-loaded, and uh, if you press in on it, you should be able to pull the pin out entirely and carefully roll this back. If you just drive the pin out, this thing is going to come sproying and hit you in the face. Um, so first pin's out, and I've just got a little towel on the ground here. I'm just putting all my components on carefully. Uh, next thing, drive the second pin out. All right, and uh, if you need to, um, I've already done this once to get ready for the scene, but basically you can get your screwdriver in between the rotor face carefully and the pad. Now remember, you're throwing the pad away, um, so you don't want to damage the rotor. You want to, you know, if you're going to mark anything up, it'll be with the pad, but you want to squeeze the pistons back into the caliper, because if, depending on how worn your uh, pads are, these pistons might be out a quarter of an inch. And when you put the new pads in, you need these pistons to be squished back. So sometimes I use um, a screwdriver to push them back. So I fold, pulled out the first pad. So the second pad has the wear sensor. So I'm going to disconnect part of the wear sensor mounts. And that's it's underneath the bleed nipple cap.
All right, and that comes up and off. Now I should be able to get the pad out. And you can see my wear sensor is trashed. The uh, wiring is frayed, the sensor is actually broken, and my pads are worn so thin that the little tit on the outside surface of the sensor has actually begun to wear. Now it hasn't worn to the point where it would trigger the electronic signal on the dash, but I expect that as I pry this up and out now, this is going to disintegrate. Because it's been in, you know, breaking. Oh, there it goes. I got it out. Um, and there's a little metal clip that goes with it that's actually part of the sensor. Um, I'm going to re-replace, you know, this one's damaged. This should be replaced. Yeah, it's just falling apart. But if you're just doing pads only and your sensor's in good shape, you would just carefully pry that out. So there's my second pad. And you can even see on this one, there's, it may not show in the video, but if you look at the companion blog, there's cracking and crazing in this. This is kind of normal, um, but those pads are right down to basically time to replace. So the next thing is to, um, we definitely need to get the pistons all the way back in. You might invent your own way of doing it. You could use the handle here. You can see, I, but you notice if you press one in, the other, or like whack-a-mole, they might pop up because the pressure moves around. Uh, so that's one technique. You could open the jaws, um, put something to counter so you don't scratch up your nice paint, and just use the tip of the jaw on the cup and uh, squeeze uh, the piston in. Um, but honestly, the, the non-marring technique of uh, just prying with the uh, a rubberized handle. And this is pushing brake fluid back into the master cylinder reservoir. So uh, you can probably do one wheel at a time this way, but if you're doing all four brakes, you got to go check um, pretty regularly to see if the water, if the fluid level is about to overflow. And if it is, you're going to have to use the um, your turkey baster or some suction technique to suck out some fluid from the brake reservoir. All right, so I have those pistons. They need to be all the way back in if you're fitting new pads. So the next step will be to do some cleanup. Um, uh, so, you know, this is where you'd use, uh, you know, brake parts cleaner. The stuff is great. Um, but if you're not taking your caliper off and you're just trying to change pads only, you really can't get in to clean a lot. Um, if you're going to get into clean, what you really want to do is maybe you want to really get these surfaces where the pad rides, where my finger is right now, because you want to get in there because we're going to want to apply some grease later. So um, yeah, basically this will be um, what I'm going to sit here and do for the next little bit is clean this up. Um, when you're cleaning it up too, you have to be careful not to be blowing a lot of grease out onto the rotor surface. Um, if you do, you, you know, basically get your clean uh, towel and then rotate the rotor and clean up uh, any grease you get on the rotor itself. Cleaned up the pins over on the uh, wire wheel, but we have the spring clip and it's not particularly bad, but the back is all gummed up with uh, brake dust and goo. So um, I'm actually going to do a little uh, clean up here um, with more brake clean. What is the function of this thing? It is designed with these angles to retract the brake pads slightly um, when you're not pressing on the brakes. It actually pushes the pads away from the rotor. Um, and uh, I believe that since it's all a spring, it's also there to try and stop some of the, sh uh, the shimmy and rattle, which would lead to squeaking. All right, so um, it's probably good enough for me. Um, so those are cleaned up. My freshly polished uh, pins, give them a quick wipe. And those are good to go. So we should check our master cylinder every now and then to see what the level is. Um, you can look in here, you can see it's really quite full. I know I'm gonna probably overfill it or as I push the last bit of, I'm above the max line here. So um, 
I'm just going to use my, uh, you can use a turkey baster or even a piece of rubber hose and sucking it up. Um, I've got a, a Mighty Vac uh, brake system vacuum bleeder and uh, I don't need to suck up much fluid, but basically you turn on compressed air, forms a vacuum and it slurps out the brake fluid. And so I'm just trying to get the level down to max. There we go. So uh, that's a great tool for that job. Um, makes it really quick and simple. All right, well to get our uh, brand new brake pads uh, ready to go back in the car, um, we should do a little bit of prep while it's easy over here on the bench. And uh, these are EBC Red Stuff ceramic brake pads, uh, but uh, whatever brand you've chosen is probably very similar. Uh, the first thing I want to do is check that the uh, brake wear sensor actually fits in the slot. And I happen to have one over here. Um, and I'm just going to take off the little copper uh, electrical connector part first and uh, just because I don't need to use that part. But I just want to make sure that the sensor fits uh, down the groove here. And what I found on uh, several aftermarket pads is they don't. The manufacturing tolerances aren't tight, you know, good enough. So this one fits in here. But uh, if you have trouble with it, and honestly off camera here, I had trouble with mine. Um, I used a little flat file and uh, I went in here and did a little uh, custom sizing of the slot and uh, also checked that I didn't have any burrs you know on the paint um, from the manufacturing process that might have just been snagging the uh, uh, the sensor so a lot easier to do this up on the bench than it is uh, on the car if you happen to have a wear sensor kicking around all right um, so now that we've checked that uh, these pads came with um, squeal shims that need to get fitted. And uh, these just simply clip onto the back. So you snap them on firmly. And then this was the way Aston Martin originally put them in the car, just squeal shims, nothing else. Then in uh, August 2013, they issued a service bulletin to all the dealerships that they've uh, um, actually wanted to start fitting anti-squeal compound to the backs of the pads. And uh, that basically works as like a rubber isolator layer um, and stops uh, some of the horrendous squealing the cars were known for. So to do that, um, the service bulletin calls out to use this paste uh, made by a company called Tunap and uh, an MP113 paste. Well, I'm in the United States, I don't have access to that. So I'm gonna use uh, some Permatex Disc Brake Quiet and I'm going to put a little bit of this on my finger, and this stuff goes from liquid to gooey in a big hurry. So uh, you don't need gobs of it, and you only need to do... <laughs> the service bulletin talks about putting it everywhere on the car. Well, you only need it where it's going to contact the uh, caliper, um, the rotor, sorry, the pistons. So I'm just smearing, the, uh, trying to get an even layer of this across the back of the shim plate because I know I'm going to grab something to show you. Here's a, the old pad. You can see the circles. So basically it all happens on the shim. So, uh, so I'm just going to, I'm not going to try and get the exact spot where the pistons are going to touch. I'm just going to do the whole back of the shim plate, but I'm not going to worry about any other area on the pad because uh, it's unnecessary. You certainly don't want to get this on the braking surface. This is only for the part that touches the caliper pistons. Uh, you should not get it on the edges either. That needs brake grease, not brake squeal goo. And you can already see it starting to set up on the other pad.
All right, fairly even coat there. And uh, I'll give that a minute to set up. So reinstalling the pads, um, I've cleaned up the caliper, obviously, and um, I've already greased this caliper, but if you needed to touch it up, you could get a, a, a grease brush and, you know, and get in down the sides carefully. You just have to make sure you don't get any grease on the rotor. Um, so I've got my uh, pads that have, uh, uh, I've given it enough time for the anti-seize, anti-squeal to set up. So I have to fit a little bit of grease. I'm going to do it right on this edge. Again, this is the, probably, this is the part that's going to touch um, the other grease surface below. I'm just trying to make sure I've got a good coating on there. And I'm carefully handling everything so I'm not touching uh, the sticky part on the back. So this glove set's going to be useless in a minute. So setting those back down, put the other one. So again, I'm greasing that edge that's going to sit in the slots. I'm really being sure I don't get any on the front face of the uh, pad. All right. So I'm going to set that down real quick. Take off this greasy glove. So uh, now it's just a matter of slipping them in. And this is where you'll find out if you've for not got the pistons all the way back in. And that one has popped out a little bit. So I am going to just give it a little. Uh, let's whack them all. Before I shove it all the way down, uh, while I have a little bit of access still, I'm going to fit the wear sensor. I'm going to get my other pad. Fit it in there. So now I have my pins. And I'm going to put my bottom one in first. And I'm going to use the punch the other direction to set it. You can hear it bottom out. Next, I'm going to fit the upper just part way. And then the spring clip, basically these beveled parts just sit and rest on forcing the pads apart. This part here, you slip under the lower pin. Then you use your thumb and you press it in and get it across like that. Now I haven't quite got it started in this opposite hole here yet. There, it started. And then I hear it set. Check my wear sensor is fully set. It is, and then the wear sensor cable goes into this little slot in the side so that the cable is held out sideways. And uh, I'm just going to check my spring plate here. It's firmly in place. Um, and that's all there is to reinstalling the pads. Now that I have this wheel all finished up, uh, you need to go do the rest of the corners of the car. If you're doing the, uh, just the fronts, do the opposite side, or if you're doing all four, do the rears. Um, if you're doing the rears as the extra step of taking off the handbrake uh, caliper, um, check out my other video series on that as well. So the, with the pads reinstalled, we're pretty much done the, uh, the project. Now you need to do some safety steps here. You need to go uh, step on the brakes three or four times uh, 
and they're going to feel soft and, and you keep stepping on them until they get hard. That's because the pistons right now are fully retracted. That's going to squeeze them out and take up any gaps. So at least uh, do it until the pedal's nice and hard. Once you've got the pedal nice and hard, you need to go and check your brake fluid reservoir again. It still might be over full or it might even be under full depending on how all the, uh, the fluid levels worked out. So you'll either need to suck a little bit more out of the master fluid reservoir or top it up with some uh, fresh brake fluid uh, to get it to the maximum line. Um, you have got to follow the brake bedding in procedure from Aston Martin. That's going to be a separate video that will link up next after this. It's going to show basically it's going to get the pad material made it up to the rotor. If you don't follow this procedure, you're going to get squeal, you're going to get poor braking performance. Um, so I'll show you all about that. And of course I have the usual wrapping up uh, steps to do. I'm going to put my fender liner back in, not that you maybe took yours out, get it back down on the ground and uh, we'll take it from there. So uh, I hopefully this uh, has helped you with your project and uh, the next video should be up here over my shoulder somewhere. Uh, my companion blog article should be linked down here below. Uh, if you like these types of videos, please go ahead and subscribe. And as always, I love hearing your comments. Please leave those down below. Thanks for watching.